Hello. Um, heard some, from some really awesome people so far. Um, and I think exploration is just so vital and so important. And for me, very much so, um, exploration is a physical manifestation of geography. And what I'd like to take you through is um, what I uh, think geography is and what I call guerrilla geography. And hopefully maybe inspire some of you to take part in, in this practice if you're not already actually doing it already. Um, my background is as a geography educator, as a geography teacher. In the UK, we're fortunate enough that all children have a geography education. Um, but even in the UK, geography is in many ways misunderstood, damaged and marginalised, both in the media and by politicians, which astounds me. And really what drove me to help found the Geography Collective, an organisation that I now work with, uh, which is 35 people who work creatively together from primary school teachers all the way up to university academics, is to re-engage people with geography, to make them think again about what it means to be a geographer and to be proud of the term and to reclaim it. So first of all, um, can anyone tell me what geography is? Ah, you've, you've heard me. I love that. That's fantastic. For me, geography is anything that happens somewhere, right? Hogwarts, Middle Earth. These are real places in our imaginations. And even places which we say are real, all we can do is imagine those places. They're not really real. And by the time we think we know those places, they've changed, so we don't really know them anymore anyway, which really brings about sort of the idea, well, what's the point of geography if it's everything? And I love this quote from the band Faithless. You don't need eyes to see, you need vision. You know, geography, being a geographer, being a geographer is about a particular lens. It's a viewpoint, it's a way of seeing the world. It's seeing patterns and systems. It's about making connections. My wife is currently in her second year of a PhD in geography. And she's looking at how um, women um, have been detained in the UK prison system after fleeing persecution in other countries, and looking at how their relationship with home, however they conceptualize that, impacts on their mental health. She shares a desk with someone who works um, studying pollen in ice cores to work out the effects of climate change in the, in the distant past. And I think many of us in this room can make the connection between the issues of climate change and how detention and refugees and the mental health and well-being of people may be influenced in the future. You know, we've seen these massive connections. So gorilla geography. <laughs> yeah, gorilla geographers could study gorillas, like gorillas. Gorilla geography is about thinking creatively. We need creative new solutions at a political level, at an educational level. But in many ways, and the geographer Doreen Massey talks about this, there's like a hard shell of ideas in the legal system in which we operate, in the way that businesses work, and that's fixed, that's not moving. There's no crisis of need for creativity in that area, it feels. People subscribe to that. Yet in the environment, in tiger populations, in all sorts of wildlife situations, in terms of climate change, we do face crises. And guerrilla geography is about saying, do you know what, we need to think differently. We need to be creative about places. And you start seeing that already. You see people in campaigns working creatively and using geography as a concept to achieve that. The occupation movement, the word occupation is a geographical term. Guerrilla gardeners are about changing places for the better, changing environments in one way or another. Street artists and so on. So one of the things I've heard a lot, which has kind of bored me, is this question of, um, is exploration dead? Has everywhere been explored? That's such an old time question, because clearly everything is always changing. And exploration isn't just about the pioneers going off and retrieving knowledge. It's about children learning. It's about exploration being a learning process. It's about searching for questions and looking for answers. In this case, finding a lost parrot, finding a lost sock. These are explorations. They're things that are every day that all of us face that are just as valid and as important to the individual, maybe, as things that feel far more exotic and far more distant. We're all searching for answers. Where are we going to die? Where are we going to live? Where are we going to go on holiday? What's our identity? Where are we from? All geographical ideas. So guerrilla geography is about encouraging people to see the world differently. It's also about encouraging people to think about how the world see them. 
And it's also about saying to children and to ourselves that we make places, we are placemakers, it's inevitable. By the fact that everyone is here, we are making this place that we're in right now. Wherever you are, you're shaping and making places. And whenever you buy or consume something, you help to shape or make a place elsewhere on the planet. When you get home as a teenager and you speak to your parents, in that moment when you're asked, how was your day? You have the option to sort of go and walk up to your room and maybe have a slightly sour household. Or to ask your parents, you know, how was your day? and give them a hug. And that place then becomes a very loving, warming environment, maybe. Not in all households, but you know, in some. <laughs> Do we teach our children to think about their influence on places at that scale that they understand? Or do we want to form a geography that's like, do you know what, I want you to imagine this distant place that's got absolutely nothing to do with you. And if you can't put a pin on a map to show what that place is or where it is or things about it, then clearly you're illiterate. Personally, I'm interested in emotional intelligence in children, their empathy, their understanding for these issues. So this uh, illustration is done by the wonderful Tom Morgan Jones, who I work with in the Geography Collective, doing our sort of children's books and other things. Um, and I'm going to come back to some of these in a bit. But my, my point in this slide really is that children face a number of barriers when it comes to geography. Yes, in terms of sort of the, the networks through communications, they have a lot of freedom. They can access all kinds of porn they couldn't access before, and lots of parents don't quite know what to do with the fact that they can access that sort of dodgy material. That's one sort of form of freedom. But increasingly, children are kept indoors. They're not allowed to play out. Clearly, that has a, an impact on their mental health, their physical health, their well-being, their ability to understand how communities work and how to negotiate risk. I think the argument there is one, but nonetheless, people don't let their children out like they should do. Terms being thrown around like nature deficit disorder, that kind of thing. In the UK education system, geography is under threat. In the, US geography, in the US education system, there isn't geography. This sticker here is from the education team who do awesome work at National Geographic and who I have the pleasure to work with, trying to make sure that geography appears in the education system in this country. Geography is at the center of what everyone does. So, so how can it not be firmly in the curriculum. It just doesn't make sense. It has so many answers. It helps children to understand the world around them. It's almost like there's a conspiracy, right? We don't want them to understand and make these connections between different things. That's somehow a danger or a risk. So I think children have problems because they're not allowed to explore outdoors. And when they do go outdoors a lot of the time, they can't really make sense of it because they're not taught about it properly in schools. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> so I'm thinking that... Um, <laughs> is anyone here going to Everest in the next <laughs> few months? It clearly beyond, belongs there, doesn't it? I think we just need to think about the systems in which we work and what works and what's right. And just say, what if? What if children were allowed to play out on the street more? What if we blocked off a street on a Sunday? I ask parents on my street, say, on a Sunday, let's have a couple of people. It's like a dead-end street. Let's have a cup of tea at the end of the street and let the kids play out. Of 100 households, five wanted to call the police because they thought that it was illegal to do that. <laughs> they're, like, they're wrong, right? And then another 10 sort of said, well, there aren't any children on this street. And there are, there's lots of children. And then another group thought that increased risk. And this is, this is a brilliant example of where sort of geographical knowledge and understanding is completely lost. Because if parents understood the real risks of letting their children play out, then they'd let their children play out. If they understood where the risk was from cars or from strangers, if they had the geographical understanding to understand whether it's safe to get to the park or not, then maybe they'd let their children play out more. They'd be allowed to explore. They'd be allowed to learn from breaking a window or cutting a worm in half. Vital childhood experiences. <laughs> this is guerrilla geography. Uh, does anyone recognize this building? This is on the US Embassy in London. Um, and this was under the Bush administration where it was suggested that waterboarding was completely fine. Um, so we thought that we'd have an international waterboarding championships outside the US Embassy. <laughs> But to be clear, ball games, 
I don't think they're like the Mayan sort of form of board games, but you know, sort of board games not allowed, waterboarding, completely fine. And it's just using, <laughs> it's using a geographical principle. Street artists do this a lot. It's about put, taking something out of place and putting it into another place to make people think differently about it. So in an education context, I wouldn't recommend waterboarding with children. It's about saying, you know, any, any classroom environment involves, includes a teacher, a learner, an environment, an activity, and a subject. How can we make any of those more regular or irregular or quirky? And sadly, you know, this sort of section is called geography teaching from the edge. Geography is at the edge, like the thing that the whole planet and the universe is about, right? That's at the edge. And children are not allowed to play out, and they don't get recess. So the really informal, radical, crazy thing would be to let children learn by exploring outdoors. Like, that's the radical thing, right? So gorilla isn't really that gorilla. It's kind of asking for a bit of, like, sensible action. This is the thing I did, um, first gorilla action I did as a teacher. This is um, trying to represent an ecological footprint by covering um, a, a football pitch or several football pitches and bed sheets. And what this sort of showed was the amount of biologically productive land and resources that one of my pupils needed to support their lifestyle over a sustained period of time. And this sparked a big conversation because it was about scaling up that lesson and starting a conversation with the community. Another one of my projects that was mentioned is about walking across cities in new ways. You know, quite often, media organizations sometimes like the exotic, they like the extremes. If you're going to visit Mexico City or Mumbai, you visit the slums in the very wealthy areas. If you visit my city, London, you do the same. You don't really visit the 90% of the area, which is sort of fairly normal. And this project was about saying, what if we walked across a city, taking a photograph every eight steps, but the route being defined by um, trying to represent deprivation for what it's really like in different areas, rather than by our own human biases. And in this case, taking a photograph every eight steps. And actually, on this particular walk, one of my friends sticking on the theme of play, you sort of got up on this slide and sort of decided to sort of take a picture. And actually, to get to this slide in this play park, we had to um, cross over this very busy highway. And he su su suffered an amazingly severe electric shock because the town council had decided that it would be a really great idea to put a play park not only between two highways, but with electric pylons over the top as well. It's geography, right? It's like lack of geographical understanding. So Mission Explore. Mission Explore is a project we started that's all about encouraging children to get outside and be curious, creative, and critical. I think STEM is really important, but I think that's for the employer, not necessarily for the individual. I think children need to have fun and play in the woods. And we do this project uh, with great support and sort of closely tied in with the education team here through a series of children's books. A social gaming website, which again the education team here uses for part of their Geography Awareness Week, which is all about giving children points and badges for going off and doing missions in generic and specific places. We go to places like Glastonbury, which is one of the biggest uh, music festivals in the country. And when we do that, we work with children to make their own books. They become authors, they become explorers, they learn that they are um, explorers themselves. And we recently got a spaceship as well. That's my son. <laughs> And when we talk to children, what we say to them is, do you know what? You are a space explorer, a time traveler, a spaceship. You carry ideas around with you and you can move them around. You are a placemaker. <laughs> you can change places through your actions by understanding issues like sustainability. We try to be inclusive in the way that we work, both in terms of gender, ethnicity, in terms of disability, to be as inspiring as we can. And this is all about saying, do you know what? You want to explore, experiment, experience, and develop expertise in the world. So things like, investigating the murder of an animal, trying to find a lost cat, trying to cross a wood without touching the ground, measuring distance by having a roll around. Who can find the most beautiful poo? <laughs> Is it really luckier if you walk uh, sort of outside a ladder rather than under it and so on? Comparing the amount of uh, wildlife to pollution in a river, questioning how pigs are treated when you um, eat your food. And they're all wrapped up, many of those things, in our new book, Mission Explore Food, which much of it's going to be available for free through National Geographic Education. So the last thing I'll say is that geography is really important. There are some people in this organization who think that geography is a dirty word. Dirty, geographically speaking, means something that's out of place. Geography isn't out of place. It is place. We must embrace it. We must get people to think differently about what geography is. And I think that this is the institution to really make that happen. Thank you very much. Thank you.